Welcome to Belgium for race number 6 of the UCI Women's World Tour. It's the Flash Rayon that awaits the peloton in Huy with 137 kilometers, 11 climbs and the notoriously famous finish up on the Mur de Huy. A climb that is only 1.3 kilometers long but with ramps up to 26% steep. Uh, it's one of the most iconic finishes in cycling and uh, I love it. Yeah, it's, it's just very difficult. <laughs> uh, there's no lucky winner here, it's really the strongest girl who wins and that's what's cool about this race. Lizzie Amitstedt goes into the race as the overall leader of the UCI Women's World Tour, but the world champion was sick last week and does not see herself as a contender for the victory in Huy. I mean, I really just want the team to have a good performance. It's been a long, hard spring for me, a successful one, but I'm happy to make it a good team performance today. Amitstedt wants to help Megan Garnier and Evelyn Stevens, who won here in 2012, but the list of contenders is long, starting with Wiggle High Fives, Elisa Longo Borghini and Emma Johansson, who was just edged out by Amitstedt in Flanders two weeks ago. But the strongest team comes from Rabo Liv. I think with the strengths they have, uh, yeah, for sure they have two, like four riders in the team that, that's been winner here before, so yeah, if you look on the on the teams that are on the sat list, they are for sure the, the strongest ones with the most numbers, um, but yeah, you never know. Rabobank comes with defending champion Anna van der Breggen, the winner from 2014, Pauline Ferrand Prévost, and the leader in the UCI Women's World Tours Young Rider classification, Kalian Yeverdoma, as well as Marianne Foss. She won here five times already and is back to her first big race after a break of almost one year due to injury. Well, of course it's special. It's not new for me to be in uh, Flash Wallon, but um, well, after uh, such a long period out, uh, my first World Tour uh, race back and uh, yeah, of course it's uh, it's exciting. Uh. But it's not all about the three biggest teams. With Aljena Amjaljusic from Kenyan Tram, Annemiek van Floyten from Orica AAS, who was second in 2015, and mountain bike hero Yolanda Neff from Sebeto Futon, there are others with high expectations. And then there is Ashley Moulman from Sebelo Bikla, who was in the top five for four years in a row. I love the Mir. Um, it sounds crazy, but I love it. I love the pain, I love the crowds, I, I love just everything that it stands for. So of course, um, every time I come up it, I get a, a special motivation and um, today I'm sure it will be no different. Straight from the start of the race, the peloton sets a high tempo. It's only nine kilometers until the start of the first climb and everybody wants to be in front there. Then it's Shaila Guterres Ruiz from Silence Pro Cycling who attacks first and over the climb a group of seven forms. Jessica Allen, Sophie Doig, Cecilia Gotas Jonsen and Lex Albrecht are joined by Emilia Farlin and Katja Ragusa. The breakaway gets rolling and builds a lead of up to 3 minutes during the first 60 kilometers of the race, while the peloton is riding relatively easy. The Flash Vaillon is a very interesting race for breakaway riders. On top of each and every one of the 11 climbs, there are 300 euros up for grabs. The Canadian Lex Albrecht from Bipink seems to become a specialist in reaching out for those mountaintops. She collects 6 Queen of the Mountain prizes throughout the race and is also the first to climb the famous Mur de Huy after the first of two laps. But it's also at the mirror that the peloton starts to chase harder and after around 100 kilometers the breakaway gets caught. Amistad pulls hard on the climb up to Côte de Boiseau with 40 kilometers to go and therefore the peloton splits into pieces. The world champion seems 100% committed to ride for her teammates and a group of not more than 30 riders emerges, with one important rider missing. Moulman can't follow anymore and a team Sevelo Bikla later reports she was ill already in the morning. With Moulman missing at the front, the race for the victory is on now. One attack follows the other, of course, Orica AIS tries to break clear, and the same goes for the favorite from Wiggle High Five and Rubble Lift. But in the end, it's Carmen Small who celebrates her 36th birthday with a solo. She builds a lead of up to 20 seconds, but of course, the big teams in the peloton don't want to let her go too far. In the second last climb of the day, the 1.3 kilometers long Côte de Giraffe, that is going mostly straight up at an average of 8.1%, Small gets caught again with less than 10 kilometers to go. Now Rabolif tries to play their numbers. First Nervia Doma accelerates and shortly after defending champion Van der Breggen counter-attacks. The Dutch woman looks very strong and rides almost the whole climb at the front. First it's six and then only four riders who can follow her over the top. Stevens, Garnier, Longo Borghini and Nevia Doma are going with her into the downhill towards Hui. But the collaboration in a group of five potential winners from three different teams is not very good. And so Kenyan Srams Amjaljusic and Orika's Garfoot can bridge to the leaders again with around four kilometers to go. 
in the valley it's again the already known game Rabu already played on the climb. Nievia Dommer tries to break away and gets caught while Van der Breggen sits and waits for the right moment. At 2.5 kilometers from the finish she accelerates hard at the tail of the group and sprints away. Only Stevens reacts quickly and follows but for the American it's already really hard to close the gap. The two new leaders reach Hui, but it's only Van der Breggen who has the power to ride at the front. Stevens can only sit on a wheel and try not to drop before the climb up the moor. Meanwhile the chase seems dead. Nobody wants to help wiggle high fives Longo Borghini and so Van der Breggen and Stevens ride away. From behind it's Small who bridges back to the chase and takes over the lead immediately, but the help comes too late. And in the climb her legs are empty pretty soon. So the race for the victory is a fight Van der Breggen against Stevens and the question is can the American try an attack in the climb. She fights hard, grinding her teeth and trying to stay on the wheel of Van der Breggen but an attack is not possible anymore. Van der Breggen stays at the front all the time and manages to keep calm until the very end. She does not make the often seen mistake to go full gas too early in the muir but waits until 200 meters to go until she launches one last acceleration and drops Stevens to win the race solo. <laughs> And a second win on the Mur de Huy, exactly like last year. Um, you couldn't really believe it when you crossed the line, it looked like. What did you think there? No, I really couldn't believe it because it's, it's such a hard race and if you climb the Mur, it's, it's, it's so hard to do it. And um, every time before a race, you see the whole bunch. You are a bit nervous because you know it's going to hurt. It's a big bunch, a lot of girls who are really in shape and who want to win this race. So crossing that line for the second time is first, I really, I hoped for it, of course, but a lot of girls hope for it. And if you really can do it, then, then I couldn't believe it. I'm disappointed, you know, uh, props to Anna Vanderberg when she, when she, she attacked, I sat on her wheel the whole time. I was just hanging on, trying to get to that last you know, 50 meters where you can come around, but she was stronger than I was today. How hard was it to follow there all, all the climb on her wheel? Um, you know, the first climb felt really good. Second climb, or the mirror was, you know, I felt decent, uh, but yeah, she was just better. So disappointed to not deliver. To deliver, my teammates were incredible, and they really put Megan and I in a good position. I expected a sort of attack, and I was ready to to follow her up if she does. But uh, at one point, uh, the coach also said in the car, the point 150 meters, you have to go. So I did, and. Uh, and uh, I, I heard she was not in my wheel again. I don't know where exactly, but I only saw the finish line. So that was uh, the good thing when I crossed it. Well, I'm pre feeling pretty sick. I've been feeling pretty sick for the last 10 days and I knew that I had to do something early in the race because I wasn't even sure I was going to be able to uh, finish it. So I made sure to start at the, at the front and, and um, yeah, we just uh, put a little bit of pressure on the field coming into the first climb and uh, the, the break left and then we just, we were six girls working together pretty well and it stayed away for a good part of the race. Uh, I think it helped that none of the, the, the race favorites were, were in the group and and so I'm sure that uh, that was part of the reason why they let it go but it was nice we worked together really well and and I ended up feeling a little bit better than um, than I was thinking I I was gonna feel so yeah we had to change the tactics kind of midway through and I was climbing fine but I know this climb is really steep for me so I knew I had to go ahead so I tried to go early early to see if they would just let me go get a lot of time but um yeah, they only gave me about 20 seconds, so I got dropped on the climb and then my teammate Joel Newmanville brought me back to the group and then what am I going to do, sit in and get the same place? So I bridged to the front group solo again and uh, I, th I thought I should make pace because I was pretty dead by then. So um, I just kind of rode through them and tried to get up the climb as fast as possible. Yeah, I like the climb before the Mur and, and I said I want to try it again on that climb. So I did and we really had to make the race hard because we are with four strong girls and if you wait until the last part it's you do not yeah, you cannot use each other's strength. So uh, we tried to make the race hard and I think it worked and uh, the last part I was there with Kasia so it was really uh, 
gives us confidence to be there with two and, and we try to still um, keep attacking and attacking until the bottom and then uh, it was only the Mur. Um, I felt like really bad because <laughs> of course I had to I had to work out really hard to, to follow and felt a bit uh, squeezed. Uh, but yeah, um, better days are coming. It's a bit of a relief for you and for the team after a quite hard spring. Um, what what was the how big is the relief? Yeah, the relief. Uh, I think you can say it's really big because we were riding good in the uh, until now in the season. But yeah, big wins. We didn't really had big wins. We had some small wins, but. Um, yeah, I think we were riding well and we need races like this, hard races. Uh, like, like we said, we are with four girls here, so uh, really we were ready for this race and hoping for, uh, for a big win because if you ride good but you cannot win a race, it's a bit frustrating and, and I think this one is really good for the team also and the team worked really hard for it. Uh, I think with uh, all of the girls we... Uh, this was our only goal today and, and it's really good that it works. So Anna van der Breggen repeats her victory from 2015 with Steven second and Jan Yee third at 22 seconds behind the Dutch woman. Johansson was quickest up the moor out of the peloton to climb to 7th place and Foss got 9th. After three wins at the Strade Bianca, Trofeo Alfredo Binder and the Ronde van Vlaanderen, Amistad was 28th over the line in Hui, but stays on top of their overall classification with still a lead of 25 points over teammate Chantal Plak, who did not compete at the Flesh Vaillant. Gagné moved up to third with the same points as Johansson. With her fourth place on the Mur de Hui, Kasia Nieviadoma claimed another six points for the Young Rider classification and keeps her blue jersey. At the end of the Classics campaign she has 24 points with Lorce Makai from the Flan Tour in second place at 12 points. After a two week break the UCI Women's World Tour will start into its first state race on the 6th of May on Chongming Island. So stay tuned and see you in China.